In this segment of this tutorial, we will show you how to create your tool list. The tool list is controlled by this icon right here, and the tool list is either on or it's off. To create a new tool in GibbsCam, simply double click in any empty tool slot. This is the tool menu. This is how quick it is to create a tool in GibbsCam. The pre selected tool types for milling are all spelled out right here with these icons. There are also broaching tools and probe tools. When going through the mill tool list, most of the tools will be familiar to you. If you have a tool that does not show up in this list, you may create it as either a 2D form tool or a 3D form tool. To delete a tool from the tool list, you simply click on it and either click on the trash can or drag and drop the tool in the trash can or you may press delete on your keyboard. Let's go through the list of tools that we'll be using to machine this flange part. Whether you do it from a solid model or from geometry, the tool list will be the same. The first tool is, as you can see, it says 1.125, but what does that mean? The way we find out is double click. When you double click a tool, it will open and you will see the content. This is a rough end mill. We type in the diameter, one and an eighth. We type in the flute length and the total length of the end mill. The number of flutes and the length out of holder. The tool length offset number and the cutter comp offset number. Down here we select the tool material, making sure that your spindle direction is correct for this tool. Make yourself a good habit of typing the tool description here in the comment field. This means that when you post the code or when you wave your mouse over a tool, you will see it and the description of the tool. When you post the code, the tool will also be listed in the top of the program as a tool list. And then whenever the tool is called up in the program, you will also see the tool comment. Tool number two is a one inch insert drill. We select drill and an insert drill in this case has a 180 degree point. A 90 degree point looks like this. 180 degree point is flat. It has two inches worth of flutes and is four inches long. Two flutes. The tool preview window works just like the part preview window. You can zoom in and out with your mouse. You can roll the part around, the tool around with your mouse as well. And you can even go to home view and no zoom. The next tool in the list is a 5 8 insert drill. Exactly the same construction method that we used for tool number two. Making sure always that our spindle direction is correct. This is a 5 8 insert drill with a 180 degree point. And the tool material is carbide insert coated. In tool number four, this is our deburring tool. The easiest way to describe a deburring tool is by using countersink. It has just the right amount of parameters here for you to describe your tool. This is a 3 8 diameter with a 90 degree angle and a zero bottom diameter. That gives us a useful cutting height of 0.1875. Again, this is a solid carbide countersink. The next tool is a face mill. When describing a face mill, make sure you select face and not shell. The face mill will have a parameter here for the angle of the lead in on a face mill. This is a shoulder mill. This is a face mill. We start here at the bottom diameter and this is a three inch face mill. Consider this a Sandvik 345 face mill. Sandvik 
345 face mill. Now we start at the bottom diameter and we work our way clockwise. The first radius that we come to is 0.0156. That's the radius right here on the corner of the face mill insert. The lead in angle of this insert is 45 degrees. This number is a driven dimension. When you type in these three numbers, this number is driven by how those three numbers interact with each other. The shank diameter is 0.875. The cutting height of the insert from here to here is 0.22. The total height of the insert from here to here is 0.625. This cutter has eight flutes and it is carbide insert coated. Again, some of these tools may be duplicates. Tool number six is a half inch high speed machining end mill. This is what we will use for our volume mill cutting. We'll put this in the rough end mill category and six flutes will be cutting steel. Insert height or flute height, diameter and total height of the end mill. Don't forget to put your tool comment in. Makes life easier for people on the floor. Let's look at tool number seven. It's an inch and an eighth end mill, but it is a finish end mill, just like tool number one. The quickest way to duplicate any tool in Gibbs Cam is to simply open the tool that you want to duplicate, close it, and then go click in an empty tool slot. We only have one thing to change on this cutter, change it from rough to finish. Does this have any bearing on speeds, feeds, and depth of cut? No, but when you look at it here in the list, you can see the difference between a rough end mill and a finish end mill. So we'll call this 1.125 finish end mill. Another interesting fact about the Gibbs Cam tool list Whenever you create a tool in Gibbs Cam, you never have to create it again. At the end of this tool creation session, we will show you how to do that. The next tool is a one inch drill, 180 degree point. Two flutes, carbide insert coated. Tool number nine is a five eighths insert drill. Let's put the comment down here at the bottom. You can even put the part number here in case someone needs to order a new one. Tool number 10 is a 3 16 diameter finish end mill. 3 16 diameter finish end mill with four flutes. And it is solid carbide. The next tool in the list is tool 11 a quarter inch diameter finish end mill. It also is solid carbide with four flutes. That's all we have room for on this cutter. The next tool, tool number 12, is our finishing cutter. After we get done with our volume mill roughing, we will use this one to finish with. This one came from the Helical Solutions Library available here under plugins Helical Solutions. You can go directly to their website, select your tool, add it to your cart, order it, and then import it into Gibbs Cam and start cutting with it right away. Tool number 13 is a countersink. It is a 250 countersink with a zero bottom diameter. We'll give it five flutes and with a zero diameter and a diameter of quarter inch on the main body, that gives us a usable cutting height of 0.125. This is important when, for you to know when we go to deburr the part. Now that you have the tool list, you want to save these. Click the last one, shift click the first one, right click, save selected tools. We will call this flange part tool list two. And that's it. Those tools are now saved forever. 
If you delete those tools from this file, you can quickly retrieve them with a right click, View Edit Tool List. We're not going to use the old load tools. This is the new modern View Edit Tool List. When you click on the tool list, you will now get a preview window that shows each tool and these tools have been automatically sorted into categories by Gibbscam. If you want to import these tools into your part, simply click in the tool list and select Import All Tools and the tools are now back where they belong. Again, once you create a tool in Gibbscam, you never have to create that tool again. It's time to go do some machining on this part.